it was definitely like a, I didn't have a plan, honestly. I was like, let me do this for now. I'm young and maybe I'll get a job soon, but let me try to do this. And it wasn't, now it's, I think if I was a young guy, I'd be like, wow, there's so many opportunities to be a DJ because there's, you see how many ways there is to be successful. Um, but back then there wasn't much of a roadmap and we just kind of did it because I thought I was part of the culture. And I was like, I'm going to do something. This is where I'm from. I'm from Florida. I'm from Orlando. I want to be part of this culture we have here and I want to add to it. And I think, I think I moved to Philly just thinking I had a, I had hit a ceiling because there really wasn't anything yeah. to do there. But um, I yeah. did like, kind of cut my teeth and, and learn how to produce music in Orlando and just smoked a lot of weed and just got, you know, had a bootleg computer with programs that my friend had downloaded for me. And I just did everything learning. I wasn't even YouTube back then. You had to like just trial and error, everything. Yeah. And, and were you, I mean, when you moved to Philly and, and I mean, did you like start to buy DJ equipment with a, with an idea in mind that like you do parties, you do yeah. events, like Something I like think that. I think I was still had my heart set on being a producer, and I was obsessed with uh, right. a DJ Shadow and DJ Premier and these kind yeah. of DJs that were making music that was very interesting to me. I was like, wow, these hip hop guys are really taking it to another level. Like they're doing yeah. something that in, in Portis had a huge influence in Massive Attack and Tricky's album, and I just thought like they're making something that's so unique. They're taking old records and making them darker, and then putting new music. It's just like they're just doing something by transposing. A culture and history to make something brand new and i was obsessed i'm like let me get deeper into this like where how do you make this music and i had started to really dig into music i started to collect records i started to go to record conventions meeting other djs started to wake up at 5 a.m go to flea markets and buy vinyl and sell the sell doubles i had to the shops and make my like, make a little living that way and then go to ebay and start selling records and that became like my my, my side job and i just got obsessed with the turntable culture vinyl and then started DJing small parties and then moved on to the bigger parties and learned how to DJ. And that took a lot of time. Like people want to say, yeah. how do you, can I teach you how to DJ? A girl might come over and say like, let me learn how to DJ. And the technical side, I <laughs> yeah. can teach you in seven minutes exactly how to use all these buttons. But the, the idea of like reading a room or reading people and, and knowing the history of music is such a skill that it's, it takes like years of just going to rooms and failing at, at parties and making yourself better and better. Like you have people like Todd Terry and Bambata and these guys, Cool Herc, the founders that were just like combining records and making parties and, and changing the history by just being a DJ. And I learned as I get older, I learned like that's, those are like the guys who really changed the way we have music is, is created. I know you, you eventually dropped out of college did you have the intention of going back or like were, 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 was your family like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. what are you like doing up there? You're not going to make a living playing records for people. Like yeah. get a degree. My dad was never supportive of, of like my career path or what I was doing, but he was very, I think after a little while living in Philly and just kind of grinding and like, you know, not asking him for money anymore, you know, cause I couldn't always pay my rent. And, you know, he helped me out a lot when I did, when I needed him. Um, but eventually he saw me not asking for money. And I think that was a big success for him because all he cared about, he was like, oh, you're doing something. Because my dad never gave me any um, particularly useful creative skills, but he gave me a lot of determination and like taught me about responsibility and discipline that it's probably the most valuable lessons I've ever learned in my life because you can add that with creativity and then like everything's possible when you have those things together. Because a lot of kids just have the creative side. They don't have the the side that makes their their minds work and their minds are able to process the business. And that's so important because you just get lost and um, the work ethic you need, you know, you need to like follow through even when it comes to like writer's block or not being able to create, you got to like, you know, follow through and be determined to, to finish projects and try new things and determined to fail and learn and do it and keep doing it and just repeat, repeat. But um, yeah, I think in Philly, I just, I just, I just hated, I had a couple jobs and, I just started shifting towards you how do I make money. worked at the zoo, money. I think, right? Yeah, at, I worked at, at the point. Philly Zoo. I worked at Subway. Yeah. Um, I was an usher at the movie theaters, uh, taking the public bus home every night, you know, putting my headphones on and listening to music and just dreaming, you know, how can I, how can I get out of this? And I ended up being a school teacher for a little while. And that was actually probably the only job where I was like, wow, I can, this job actually means something because I'm not working for some corporate guy. At the end of the day, the money's not going to, the guy that owns Subway, it's, these, these are kids that their lives are changed because I'm here. So that was the first time I had a job. I was like, damn, this is a purpose. 
And when you find purpose, it makes everything kind of like make a little more sense. Um, Cause if you're just working at a retail store or like at an ad or agency, whatever it is, you're not, you're just working for somebody else at the end of the day, you know? When you finally say like, I'm doing something for myself or somebody else that's meaningful, um, it puts in perspective what, what work, what, what is work, you know? And I finally got yeah. that. And then I started shifting that towards my creative side. And it took me a long time. I don't think I made money as a musician or a DJ until I was like 24, 23, 24. And that's pretty late. At that point, if you're not making it, I would have given up. If you're if today, yeah. but back then, it's like, that was right at the cusp. Like, do I keep doing this? I'm going to be homeless maybe in a minute. Or do I keep it? Do I try to give it one more go? And then, you know, it, worked, it paid off for me in the end. Hey, thanks so much for checking out this clip of my conversation with Diplo. To hear the entire conversation, please check out The Great Creators. It's a podcast you can find anywhere. Just search The Great Creators with Guy Raz.